There's nothing more Christmassy than cozying up near a fire with a mug of hot chocolate while you watch face-eating dream parasites devour people's faces. Or a big-ass spider woman who's been living under the earth for billions of years. Or how about Killer Snowman? That sounds like Christmas to me. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd, the show where regular Christmas specials just aren't enough. We need science fiction to wrap up all our touchy-feely bits into time-altering, space-exploring nonsense. I'm your host, Zach Setter, and today's Christmas. That, that's <laughs> Merry Christmas and, and Happy Life Day, everybody. Remember Life Day? Well, I'm more of in a bah humbug state this year, so I thought in order to get in that Christmas spirit, why not marathon the entirety of the Doctor Who Christmas specials and do an arbitrary ranking of them to determine which one is the best? Everybody wants that for Christmas, right? That's what I would ask Santa for. My personal history of Doctor Who started in middle school. I watched the first few seasons, really enjoyed it, waited for the fifth season it came out, and then every season after that, for a while, I watched every single new episode as it came out. One of my favorite things about the show was during Christmas, while the show was on a break, there would be a Christmas special. I'd watch this with my family, it was a good time. Joy was had by all. The last couple of years though, I haven't watched as much Doctor Who. I kind of gotten away from the show just a bit. I need to watch the last couple of seasons. But before I go into full rewatch mode, I wanted to take a look at all 13 Christmas specials and the reboot of Doctor Who from 2005 to 2017 and rank them from my least favorite to my most favorite. Unfortunately, there isn't a Christmas special this year. We're getting a New Year's special. I, I It's named Resolutions. How, uh, how unique is that? Either way, I've got 14 hours of Doctor Who specials to watch, so I'm not complaining. After you watch this episode, my friend Jay the Zoomster is also doing a ranking of all the Christmas specials, so do me a favor and go check those out after you hear my ranking. At number 13, the second Christmas special, The Runaway Bride, features David Tennant as the 10th Doctor and introduces the companion Donna Noble, who would end up being a mainstay companion a couple of seasons later. This is by far my least favorite special for a few different reasons. I don't like the villain at all. Basically, Donna is about to get married when she finds out that her fiance has been slowly poisoning her with some kind of particles. So then this spider woman can bring back her species to life. Apparently they've been dead for billions of years. Almost all the characters in this one are insufferable. I've personally never liked Donna as a companion that much because of how annoying she is, but she's the most tolerable character in the whole special. Her fiance is annoying, the villain is annoying, her parents are annoying. The only thing I do like is David Tennant's performance is good, like always. And while I don't usually like Donna, she was all right in this one. Since this was their first meeting, it did lead to some comedic banter, which I enjoyed. I'm just glad that these specials have gotten so much better over time. At number 12, we have The Christmas Invasion, the very first Christmas special. This one is David Tennant's first full episode as the Doctor, with Rose being the main companion. Her boyfriend Mickey and her mother also follow along. I don't completely dislike this one, it definitely has some charm, and I really like the second half a lot more than the first, but what's unfortunate is that for Tennant's first episode as the Doctor, he's unconscious for half of it. The Doctor just regenerated when a species of aliens called the Sycorax came to try to enslave the human race. There's a bit where they use human blood to control the movements of one third of the population, which has an interesting twist. And I do like the fight between Tenet and the lead Sycorax, especially with the nod to Star Wars when the Doctor's hand gets cut off. But overall, there's just much better episodes. At number 11, we have the next Doctor. In this one, David Tennant is by himself in Victorian London when he hears someone call his name, only to find out that there's another guy running around calling himself the Doctor. He has everything, a companion, a TARDIS, and even a sonic screwdriver. Well, kind of. We find out that this next Doctor is really just a man named Jackson Lake who had a bout of memory loss due to a Cyberman attack. The biggest problem this special has is that it's quite forgettable. When I was thinking of all the Christmas specials before I even made this video, I actually completely forgot that this episode existed. It's not a bad episode by any means, and I actually quite like the premise and even some of the execution. Unfortunately, the big twist dealing with Jackson Lake's memory loss and everything is revealed at the 30 minute mark, with the remainder dealing with the Cyberman and a Cyber King. If anything, I felt like the Cyberman attack was more in the background of this mystery, so I after the mystery was over, I just really didn't care about anything else. 
At number 10, we have The Doctor, The Widow, and The Wardrobe, an episode loosely based on the Chronicles of Narnia. Here we have the 11th Doctor, Matt Smith, without a companion, who decides to become a caretaker for a widow and her two children. They happen to go into a portal to a winter planet where people are planning on harvesting the trees. It just so happens that these trees are alive. Well, all trees are alive, but they're alive alive. It's a nice special with a happy ending, all the characters are likable, and it's just overall wholesome. Unfortunately, it's also a bit boring at times. This is one of those specials that I never really cared for that much. It's good, but nothing particularly special about it. If anything, this is as close to a traditional TV show Christmas special as you could get. At number 9 is The Snowman, another Matt Smith special with the introduction of Clara Oswald. Well, kinda. Clara's got a really complex timeline, so this ends up being the second introduction to Clara, but it's the first full episode that she appears in. The Snowman is a bit conflicted for me, because I really like the Clara and Doctor dynamic here. Clara is my favorite companion, so that automatically makes it a bit better to me, but I'm not the biggest fan of the villain here. We're in Victoria, London again, when the great intelligence, a villain in the form of snow, which becomes becomes evil ice people and a bunch of evil snowmen. There's a bit with the young boy who becomes a Scrooge figure, but that's more on the back burner, and then we get a much better Scrooge story in a completely different special. Basically, the plot is lackluster, but the interactions between characters mixed with some comedic moments made it rise above the past few specials, but it's nowhere close to being my favorite. The last Christmas special with Peter Capaldi and the last Doctor Who episode with Peter Capaldi is number 8, Twice Upon a Time. This is another one that I was conflicted on. At the end of Capaldi's run, he's close to regenerating and contemplating not doing so, when he accidentally meets up with the first Doctor, who is also refusing to regenerate. Here they are abducted into a spaceship with a World War I captain that happened to get caught up in this mess somehow, when they find Capaldi's last companion Bill Potts there, who is supposed to be dead. If this sounds confusing, it kinda is. There's basically this group called Testimony, who is designed to extract people when they are dead and archive their memories. Bill Potts is one of them, and they're planning on doing the same thing to the captain as well. It's an interesting enough premise, but the thing that I liked about this episode was the nice send off to Capaldi. I will say that while I enjoyed having the first Doctor in this one, they for some reason made him sexist. He just kept on making like, like sexist jokes throughout the episode that didn't make any sense. Like they weren't funny. And it kind of goes along with that progressive angle that Doctor Who is trying to take in the last few seasons that just... They, they felt forced and it doesn't add to the entertainment, which is unfortunate. With that being said, there are some entertaining moments in this episode. I do love seeing Clara one last time and the World War I bit was wholesome. At number seven, we have Voyage of the Damned, another David Tennant special. This one was just pure unadulterated fun. It felt a lot like some of the other David Tennant non-Christmas specials. In this one, the Doctor finds himself on the Titanic. Well, not the boat Titanic that we know of, but a spaceship cruise ship Titanic, which has the same fate. An evil man named Max Capricorn basically allows for the ship to get destroyed so he can go retire or something like that. It really doesn't matter. What matters is that this episode has actual stakes, which is nice and not something you see often in a Christmas special. A lot of people die with some of those characters being characters that you're introduced to in the special, including a character that you actually kind of grow to like a lot and you think maybe she'll become the next companion. I actually like a lot of these characters here too, and while the actual plot isn't the best, it's the character interactions once again that does the heavy lifting. To be honest, I was quite shocked that I liked this one because this was another special that I kind of forgot about. At number 6 we have The Husbands of River Song, another Peter Capaldi special. What shocked me is that three of the top six specials have Capaldi in it, who I actually had to grow to like over time. So I don't know if it's Capaldi's great acting or the great writing or what, but I have surprisingly liked some of the newer specials more than some of the older ones. The Husbands of River Song is essentially a send-off to River Song. She was a reoccurring character for seven years, having seen three different Doctors, and it's the dynamic between her and Capaldi that makes this episode so great. The actual plot, once again, isn't anything special. River tries to remove a diamond from a king's head, a king in which she married, apparently. Yeah, Doctor Who gets weird sometimes. But overall, weird plot, weird bad guys, not much of a Christmas backdrop at all, but a beautiful send-off to a great character. Coming up on the top five, we have The End of Time, the two-hour, two-parter send-off to the 10th Doctor, David Tennant. The End of Time for me was like a movie. There's a lot that happens, all of which ends up leading to the regeneration of the 10th Doctor, ending an incredible era of Doctor Who episodes. 
To state my negatives first, it mainly lies in the plot. Once again, the plot for all of these Christmas specials aren't exactly the best. This one is just okay, it's just really stuffed. Here we have the return of the Time Lords, the return of the Master, the ending of the Tenth Doctor. There's a lot that happens within two hours, which is why it feels more like a movie to me. On the positive side though, there are a lot of great stuff here. Mainly the interactions between Wilfred, Donna's grandfather, and the Doctor. Especially in the second part, there's some really great scenes with these two. I love the final frontation between the Doctor, the Master, and the Time Lords. But my favorite part has got to be the last 20 something minutes, because this is when the doctor makes his rounds essentially telling all of his old companions goodbye we even get to see rose before she even meets the doctor it's a beautiful ending i cried the first time the doctor said i don't want to go i didn't want david Tennant to go but all good things have an ending so here's the thing about number four it's a superhero movie not a doctor who episode the return of Dr. Mysterio once again has the Doctor without a companion, this time being Capaldi. One day he meets a child who accidentally eats this gem, which ends up granting him superpowers. So we see this guy named Grant about 20 years later, who becomes an actual superhero, and we see him deal with his secret identity as the main basis of the plot. It's a cute special that I ended up really enjoying. There are these aliens that are trying to take over the world, but that actually ends up taking a backseat to Grant's struggle of being in the friend zone his entire life. There's some great comedy here, a nice story. My only issue with the entire thing is that the Doctor really doesn't do a whole lot here. Like usually the Doctor has these great monologues and he's out there saving people and all that. But instead in this episode he basically just ends up being the catalyst to Grant getting superpowers. It honestly felt like a spinoff to Doctor Who rather than a Doctor Who episode, but I still really liked it. At number three is The Time of the Doctor, basically Matt Smith's regeneration story. This episode is beautiful in so many ways. We get a doctor who actually ages. He's sent to this planet called Trenzalore to protect its people and the Time Lords from being attacked. We end up getting so many of the classic Doctor Who villains from Daleks to Cybermen to even Weeping Angels. The Clara moments are great. The ending speech that Matt Smith gives is probably my favorite in the entire series. It didn't get me sad like the David Tennant's ending gave me. Instead, it was hopeful and grateful to the end of Smith's arc. This is such a wonderful episode and my third favorite Doctor Who Christmas special. Number two, Last Christmas. The first Capaldi Christmas special is the best Christmas special in the entire series that also has a great Doctor Who plot. One of the issues with a lot of these specials is that the plot is very lackluster and the villains are pretty bad. So in order for the episode to be enjoyable, you either have to have great character interactions or some kind of wholesome Christmas vibe or something outside the regular plot to make it all good. Last Christmas did a fantastic job of having a traditional, pure, science fiction Doctor Who plot that's executed really well, with twists and turns that makes it that much more enjoyable. Not only that, but we do get some actual Christmas stuff here, with Santa Claus playing a surprising role in the story that wasn't too Christmassy to the point of me being annoyed. If you've never seen a Doctor Who episode, I think you could just as easily watch this special and still get a lot out of it. The story is really great, and I love the characters. And last, but certainly not least, is my favorite Doctor Who Christmas special, A Christmas Carol. Now, what I should say is that I don't particularly care for the traditional A Christmas Carol story. It's honestly played out. But what this episode does is it pretty much gives a non-conventional retelling of the Christmas Carol story while doing a lot of unique things with it that makes it enjoyable. This one may be my favorite piece of Christmas media. If Last Christmas was the best Doctor Who Christmas special, A Christmas Carol is the best Christmas special of all time. I honestly don't have a single complaint with this one. The story is actually good. The characters are great. The interactions between the characters are fantastic. The Scrooge character is also great and I love seeing how he changes throughout the episode. While most specials don't have a companion, this one does have Amy and Rory, not particularly taking on the companion role in this one, but they're still important to the story. There's some great visuals, the music is amazing, and it's a beautiful story that makes you sad and happy at the same time, and easily my favorite of all the Doctor Who specials by far. That's all the time we have for today. Don't forget to check out Jay the Zoomster's channel for his ranking on the specials. Him and I basically watched all of these in the span of a couple of days and then talked a lot about them on Discord. But surprisingly, our lists are different. So go check that out to see how his list is different than mine. 
If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you didn't like it, you can hit the dislike button. That's fine. But then you'd be a Scrooge. And I'm already being enough of a Scrooge for all of us. So hit the like button. It's Christmas. Go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd. I'll see you with one more episode before the new year. I'm going to do a My Favorite Things of 2018. That should be dope. It should be out next Sunday. Until then, I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I will see you later for more Your Everyday Nerd. Goodbye. <laughs>